let's chat amenorrhea, Alex. So define it first, um, and then does it hinder muscle growth? Yes. So this is going to be a, a loss of cycle or, or lack thereof of, of hormonal harmony is what we'll call it. Um, and, and many women are going to experience this from a, a, a plethora of different facets, whether that be, f- it's, it's generally from stress on the body. So when we define stress on the body, it's going to be uh, many different factors, whether that be from uh, your work environment or a relationship environment, the uh, training stress that you're putting on yourself, the uh, distance running, those different factors, low calorie consumption, a lot of different things can can cause this. And, and I think that a good analogy uh, that's a little bit more drastic for individuals to understand is that if a male is, is very low uh, testosterone, let's say that his uh, scoring for his total testosterone is roughly around 100, which is going to be very low for those that are not familiar with hormonal panels. A a good scoring for a total testosterone for a male is going to be between 700 and 1,000. And so things that are going to um, transpire for the male that's scoring between 100 to 200, even below 100, is that they're going to uh, accrue body fat significantly faster. They're going to lose strength quite rapidly. They're going to have a very hard time putting on muscle, very hard time recovering, uh, not being able to sleep, those different factors. And what's interesting with individuals who have lost their cycle or females who have lost their cycle, a lot of those same things are transpiring, but it's just in a more drastic uh, visual with males because of the large um, gap between a, uh, a male's testosterone. Whereas with a female, we're talking like tens of, of that testosterone, or we're looking at progesterone and estradiol and um, DHEA and, and many of the other factors. And so, yes, it is going to to cause issues within muscle gain. Now, is it impossible to put on muscle tissue? No, but it is going to be uh, significantly more difficult depending on the um, severity of the, the loss of the cycle itself. And within that, I guess another analogy would be that if you were to go into a 100-meter race, uh, not having your cycle and, and the hundred meter race is, is you, uh, wanting to put on muscle tissue. It's kind of like having a 25 pound weight attached to your ankle and trying to run with this thing. And you're next to, um, I don't know, someone, Shikari. yeah, Shikari or, or one of the, the, the women from Jamaica, Jamaica. <laughs> just absolutely torching you running like a, a seven second hundred meter <laughs> I don't think women are at seven seconds yet, but to men <laughs> aren't either. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be kind of a, uh, an analogy for you to utilize there. So if you are struggling with your menstrual cycle, I would encourage you to put all of your efforts into regaining your cycle first and having consecutive cycles, looking at b- blood panels to make sure everything is very crisp before you make a big push to put on muscle tissue. Um, that would be my my pitch for your overall internal health uh, yeah. before you wanted to put on muscle tissue. Yeah, and if you have to think your body works in harmony, so if something is off internally, then it's going to be harder to do the things that you want to do. So whether that is fat loss or muscle gain or whatever it may be, if you have levels off internally, then that can cause things to be off as a whole. Um, so it's not just applying to women losing their cycle, but like Alex said, of men having lower testosterone testosterone or just having a value off internally that can affect how your body processes things because so many things are interrelated. 